Hi everybody, Elisa here with another Vera Bradley bag of the day. Um, I know it's been a, a long time since I made a video, probably about a month. Apologies for the dog chewing noises. <laughs> Some things never change. Um, I've just been going through kind of a rough period personally and um, dealing with some very difficult um, things. And so I haven't really been in my right mind to do videos and stuff. Um, but today is the first day of winter and I do like to do my seasonal pattern lists, my top 10 lists. And 10. <laughs> I put that in quotes because it always ends up being more than 10 patterns because I have trouble making decisions. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I, I have a, a, a one day window of opportunity to do a top 10 winter patterns list and today's the day because it's the first day of winter and so um, I wanted to make a video. Um, I'm not sure when I'll be able to do another one. I mean, I'm trying to get motivated, but it is kind of super hard for me right now. Um, anyway, let's get to it because these tend to be a little bit on the long side. I'm uh, just looking at my bags all around me on the floor. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so in the interest of trying to keep this not too terribly long, I did write them down because I'll never remember and I, I always lose count and everything and it's embarrassing. <laughs> So, okay, so I'm going to start now. It's, it's really 13 um, in this, this section. I have my, my top 10, which is really 13, and then I have my, I have one bonus sort of pattern, uh, asterisk pattern that I will get to at the end, and then I have my uh, five winter white patterns, what I call winter whites. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to start in reverse order with 13. <clears throat> and this is Sweethearts, which may not seem like an obvious choice, but I have been carrying this a lot lately, and I think it's because of the red, uh, the red and the black, but especially the red that makes it feel holiday-ish to me. I also have recently been trying to pare down my collection quite a bit, and reorganize my closet because I just couldn't take that I have no space so I don't have easy access to all of my bags right now and there are one or two patterns that probably would have been on this list if I could reach those bags but I can't like for example um, Mickey's Sweet Treats which I think has a very sort of frosty white you know snowflake like kind of quality to it um, but anyway, so not really an obvious Christmas pattern. It does have the hearts, um, but I do love this bag. I, I like these hearts because they very, they very much remind me of Jim Dine, uh, Jim Dine's paintings, especially when he uses his heart motif, whatever. So um, I do like this a lot. So that was thirteen. I don't know where I'm going to put these. <laughs> oh, here. Okay, twelve. Yes. <laughs> Again, maybe not so obvious, but one of my all-time favorite patterns. So it's, I feel like it makes it onto all my lists. <laughs> any any excuse to throw it onto a list, and I, I use it. And this is Dragon Fruit Floral, which was a Dillard's exclusive pattern, and I just love it. And I think it's good for all seasons. I mean, maybe it doesn't scream summer, really, or spring, but I, I use it all year long. Um, and I do think it has kind of a nice kind of brocade kind of look to it, which is kind of wintry. This is the, uh, that, that, the Sweetheart's tote was the Vera tote, the regular size one, so the big one. This is a Carson North-South tote. Um, again, you'll see maybe you can tell a lot of my bags are flattened now. I used to try to store as much of my stuff as possible not flattened, so it would keep good shape but it was just becoming too problematic for space and so I finally accepted that I have to flatten out a lot of my bags <laughs> for storage and so that's why they kind of all look like pancakes right now but I do love this Carson North South tote and I wish they would still make this style love it love this hidden slip pocket back here in this front there's a front flap front uh, there's a front pocket with a big flap, which I do like, magnetic snap closure, and then there's this hidden slip pocket behind, which I love, love that. Okay, uh, right, 
so then uh, 11. So that was 12. 11. It's a good vintage one. This is Mickey meets Birdie. And uh, just for the white and the sort of deep pink. It's not red. It is a deep kind of hot pink, like an azalea kind of color. Um, <clears throat> but it just kind of reads a little bit as red and the white, you know, a very lacy kind of snowflakey kind of look with the way some of the leaves are rendered. So I do like this for um, winter and Christmassy kind of thing. I like this. And this is, I'm assuming this was called the Vera Toad. I mean, this is sort of a vintage style. You know, this is when they, you could still see the quilting on the lining and it has the six interior slip pockets, but they are, you're not going to be able to see it because of the light here probably, but they are quilted, the, the walls with the slip pockets quilted, so that's nice. Gives the bag kind of some more structure. Um, and this has a toggle closer, closure up top, not a zipper. It's got that nice border trim there. Just lo love this. Love this pattern. Uh, okay. So now, officially at the 10 spot, so now we're at the top 10. <laughs> and this is a uh, cozy plaid neutral, which I just call the big deer tote. Um, <laughs> I have used this already this year. I'll, I'll use it again before, in the next couple of days probably. Because this is kind of something that is hard to get away with at any other time of the year, I feel like. <laughs> I'm not sure why that is, but anyway, so this, as I said, when I first got this tote, um, and I, I got it on Amazon where I put it in my cart and then let it sit there and waited for the price to drop, and it, I waited a long time and eventually dropped to the price. <laughs> but, <clears throat> you know, this tote is too much. This really is too much as far as a novelty tote, but it's just sort of so outrageous that it's kind of fun and campy, and so I got it. Just couldn't, couldn't resist. Um, the back is just the, the plaid, the front has a little embroidery, floral embroidery at the bottom, and then this applique patch, you know, a deer that sort of, as I said, kind of, it's like a boucle kind of a fabric, but I was saying oh, it reminds me of industrial carpeting, but it is like a boucle. <clears throat> and the, um, excuse me, the scarf has this kind of texture woven into it. I don't know if it'll come, if it'll come out here. Sorry, my light's a little dark. But it almost looks, it, you can sort of see it there. So it's sort of mimicking the way a uh, um, stockinette stitch would look if you're a knitter. You know, you have a knitted scarf. Your basic knit stitch is stockinette. That's kind of sort of mirroring, mimicking that in the scarf. So that's nice. That's nice. It has a, it doesn't have any exterior pockets like a regular Vera tote. Oh, it's basically the same size as a regular Vera tote, but it does have that hidden slip pocket with a with a hidden magnetic closure which is kind of nice and inside the pockets are edged the slip pockets are edged with the plaid fabric which is kind of a nice touch makes it look a little bit more expensive feel a little bit more <laughs> substantial <laughs> oh my goodness the, the, the recycling truck is here it's the end of the world okay that was 10 nine fox, foxwood i i know you know this is a great fall pattern screams fall but i do carry it into winter i do, do love the foxwoods <laughs> she's little but she fancies herself as very tough <laughs> a little lion um foxwood beer tote you know one of the best i always say this one of the best coordinating trim patterns ever. Love this bag. Boxwood. And boxwood blue. I don't know if I, oh, there goes my list. I don't know um, if I've ever shown this. This is my custom campus um, backpack in fox, a combination of foxwood blue and foxwood menagerie blue, which was sort of like the coordinating lining. People know, you know, the foxwood lining is a foxwood menagerie, and in the custom section for a while they had the blue version of that. Um, <clears throat> I just decided when they were discontinuing this, when they were had announced that they were going to remove these two patterns from the um, custom options. I just decided to really take a chance with the foxwood blue um, 
which I think I, I do have a, a video of myself sitting in my car with my uh, custom Vera tote in boxwood blue, and I, I'll put a link to that video. Um, <clears throat> where I talk about a little bit about how risky it seems to this fabric seemed like really a gamble in the custom section because you, you know you kind of want a fox and what are the odds are very slim so you know I ordered it I just decided to order it and have fun with the fabrics and the piping and stuff and um, try to convince myself that if I didn't get a fox I would be okay with it although that was just a big lie <laughs> who are we kidding um, anyway, so um, I did luck out, you know, and get the get a fox right there in the front pocket. So, you know, thank you to the wonderful custom people. Um, side pockets also in the foxwood blue. Like there's a chipmunk bear, and the other side pocket. I don't think I got a, um, I don't think I got any rabbit or anything on this. But you know, it doesn't matter because I wanted the fox and I got the fox. And so then, then everything else, just the pockets and the front pocket, the side pockets and the front pocket, foxwood blue, everything else, foxwood menagerie blue. And all the, all the features are just like your regular campus backpack um, that you would order, you know, off the rack, that you buy off the rack. Um, <clears throat> laptop compartment, you know, uh, trolley sleeve, this ridiculously crunchy straps that are really too wide for me. But I have been using this backpack a lot when I go to my dad's. I've been using a backpack now because um, it helps me get my stuff from the car to the apartment easier. So I'm more, I have more, you know, can load myself up more because <laughs> I'm sort of hands-free with the backpack and it's working out really well. Um, and so, you know, I, on a bag, on a, t a tote bag, I would never have gone for this trim, which I also think they pulled. I think this was Bahama Bay. I'm not sure what the name of this trim was. Um, I was hoping that it might pick up some of the sort of teal colors in the fabric, and I feel like it did that really well. Uh, so I, I feel like I lucked out. And I felt like on a backpack is sort of a more youthful, kind of fun item, not so serious as a tote. And I, I, so I would never have done this, this trim on a tote. Um, I didn't do this trim on my tote. And, and then I thought, well, let me have fun with the lining, too, and it sort of picks up the lining. So the lining, for the lining, I did Big Cats, which I'm always saying, it's just one of my favorite custom fabrics. I think this fabric is so gorgeous, and I would buy everything in it if I had, you know, unlimited funds right now. And I hope that they leave it in the custom section for a while so that I can <laughs> save up and get some more stuff in it. I love, would love a duffel in it. Would just love, and a backpack with it on the outside. But I do have it as the lining here. I think it worked really well. Just very pretty. Picks up that teal that's in the, the foxwood blue fabric. Um, and it goes with the trim very nicely. And I did do embroidery in here. Whenever they're you know, I have the option for custom inside embroidery. I tend to take advantage of it. And so I'm just very pleased with the way this came out. So that was, again, number eight, Foxwood Blue. Okay. Oh, yes. Seven. Uh, Forbidden Forest, which is the one of the more recent, it's not the most recent, Harry Potter. I mean, they just released something else, that thing with the glasses that I, I just think looks ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but this this is a gorgeous pattern, very pretty, a pretty Harry Potter pattern, as I said. And I do think it has a very wintry feel to it because of the foliage and the sort of moonlit lighting, you know, and that feel that you get. Um, throughout, you know, with the castle, and just the, the rendering of the other elements in here. It looks like a forest in moonlight. And so that kind of, that frosty feeling, gives you that frosty feeling with the white and the light tones dropping out on a darker background, in this case purple. So I just think it has a very wintry feel. So um, definitely carrying this for winter. I just love this pattern. I, ha I do have a video on this pattern. I could put a link. Is that where I talk about some of the elements in the pattern? I was glad I got this, the hippogriff, uh, more than I, I had. 
I have gotten a different bag and I, I exchange it for this one. I just, I just, you know, this is an interesting figure. I mean, it's a little weird looking, but I think it, it lends to the sort of frosty, wintry feel. Um, and I didn't realize that this was like a mythological character that had already existed. I kind of, I wasn't sure if the author had sort of made up this character, but she didn't make up this type of a character. I, it already was in existence in mythology. I, mean, I think some of the things are from her imagination and other things she's she's absorbing other influences. <clears throat> not, not, it's not a criticism. Anyway, so uh, Forbidden Forest, number seven. What are you doing here? <laughs> okay, Ski Slope Snoopy, in my last video, I did talk about this pattern. I can put a link to that. Um, you know, I mean, it's just obvious. <laughs> it's not... Not much to say here. Very wintry, very Christmassy. I have used this. I cut the tags off. I'm keeping it. Um, yeah, you know it is very youthful. Uh, not not my go a go-to bag for me, but I did I did kind of want it just a sort of um, even though I don't I don't vision myself carrying it too often uh, because it does have a sort of a kitty feel to it. Um, I do appreciate him as an illustrator, Charles Schultz, and for that reason I wanted it. I mean, he's one of the great, you know, illustrator cartoonists. Um, so I, I kind of wanted that as a tribute to him, or, you know, to mark that, to have something that sort of speaks to that. So I, I wanted it for that reason. Um, now these are all, these have all been Vera totes. Um, the one benefit to flattening them all out and putting them in storage bins in my closet is now they're really easy to get to. <laughs> it's much easier to get them in and out of my closet, so I'll, I'll use more of my bags, and so that makes me happy, even though they have to be flat. And they sort of, you know when you buy those plastic bins from Target, they sort of have that sort of plasticky smell when you first get them. I haven't really had time to let them sort of air out anywhere, not in my closet, and so my bags are sort of the top ones, the ones that are sort of resting closer to the plastic lids, have picked up a little bit of that plastic smell, but I'm assuming that will dissipate over time. I'm not sure what's going on over here, but just please keep it calm. Okay, so that was six, Ski Slope Snoopy. Okay, five, this is a good classic, and this will always be on a winter patterns list for me, and even a Christmas patterns list for me. This is Bordeaux Blooms. I just think this screams Christmas and winter. The way the, the leaves and the foliage and things are rendered kind of looks like holly, and you know, the big white flowers are kind of frosty looking. You know, that, that burgundy color sort of gives you that red and green kind of feel. I got this one, this bag in Macy's in New York, and I just, when I saw, I had coupons at the time. Uh, I can't remember, but I was able to use them all, so I don't remember how much it cost. This was years ago, but um, when I saw the dragonflies, I was like, oh, that's, that's the bag. <laughs> so, um, yeah. This is kind of has a very sort of holiday look. Well, this right here. Those small blue... Um, berry type, you know, elements. So yeah, Bordeaux blooms number five, right? Yes, five. Okay, for big cats, another custom. Um, because I just think, well, I love this. Like I said, I love this pattern. I think it's gorgeous, very rich, you know, jewel tone background color, but. Why I'm including it on the winter list is because of the white trees. Um, all those white leaves, to me, give it a very kind of frosty, wintry look. And so I, I'll be carrying this. Um, for the lining, I just did. I just did the same fabric inside. Hard to see because of my lighting. I just wanted as many cats as possible. <laughs> the straps were the coordinating. Big Cats Ditsy, I think is what they're calling it. As I always say, when they first loaded this up there, this was called Big Cats Meow. I swear to God it was. And then they changed it. 
that I started to doubt myself. Wasn't I going crazy? <laughs> um, okay, that was four, three. This is um, a custom, another custom. I don't think I've shown this before. This is my um, Java Olive uh, is the body. Let me get my stuffing out of here. <laughs> uh, love anything kind of olive color because I'm a big camo kind of person right now. Pants or camo. <laughs> um, so when they came out with this version, uh, this color uh, option on the play on the classic Java blue, I knew it was going to be all over it. I, I do tend to like any of their versions of the Java, the plays on the Java blue pattern. Um, this one is the olive, has an olive background and the uh, design is navy blue. Let's see if I can. There we go. And so for the straps, I did, they also in the custom section are offering a Java purple. And that's what I used for the straps here. Um, and the uh, piping, the trim, is um, microfiber, navy microfiber. This is the first time that I have used the navy. Um, I was hesitant, always hesitant to use it because on my computer screen it looks like a dark gray. And so I was never sure it was going to match. Um, but I decided after looking at some photos online of people's custom bags to take a chance and that it might match. Um, and it does, it matches really well, and so I wouldn't hesitate, it looks navy, very dark navy blue, and I wouldn't hesitate to use it again when I needed a navy. Um, I do think, uh, I do think, though. I'm not 100% sure, but I do think the background in Java purple is navy. I don't know. It's hard to tell whether it's black or navy, but um, it's working with the navy trim, and it's working with the, the navy in the Java olive fabric, so no complaints here. And my lining, let me turn it inside out. My lining is also Java purple. This way, if people are interested in Java purple but they haven't seen it, um, you can get an idea. I mean, I'm sure there are lots of other videos already. People probably have custom totes in Java purple, but um, so I was always hesitant about Java purple because I felt like, oh, this is going to be maybe kind of electric and boogie baby. <laughs> Um, I'm dating myself. God, who sang that song? It's electric. <laughs> um, so I, I always thought, well, God, I don't know if I'm going to want this on an exterior because it might be a little too just purple and in your face and whatever, but it's much softer than I expected. And so I was very pleased with it. I think it's gorgeous. And I would, de now I'm definitely feeling like I would love to have a bag and this would be out outside being Java purple. Um, but again, I, I, right now I can't, I can't spend the money. I, I need to save up for other things right now. I might need some money for stuff in like the first few months of the next year. I don't know. Um, anyway, but this is the Java purple up close. Just very pretty, very feminine. And I did do embroidery, just a drawing here, my standard drawing of Duke. And this thread is the Arden Lavender, I think is what they're calling it. It's the lavender thread. Um, it, it, it reads much more lavender on my screen, um, but it, you can see that it, it does have a tint here. Uh, but it's not really a strong, I'm pretty sure that's what I got. I think that's what I get. <laughs> but it's not reading as lavender as, as you would think it's going to. I'm pretty sure it was lavender. <laughs> At any rate, it goes. It works. Whatever it is, it works. <laughs> and this fabric is the microfiber, the navy microfiber that is the trim for that embroidery patch. So now that, um, now that I've turned it inside out, let me see if I can turn it back. Um, I did have somebody ask me about washing custom bags recently on, on one of my, made a, a comment, oh, I think it's either on Instagram or um, YouTube, I can't remember. And I referred them, and I'm going to do that again here, to um, 
the channel Vera is my bag and Liz does her videos there and hi Liz <laughs> this is a good Vera friend um, and I recommend her channel and um, she talked about I don't know if it was one of her stories on Instagram or, or I don't know if she did a video talking about it but I do think she did a, a little video on Instagram I don't know if she did a YouTube thing about it I haven't I'm sorry to all the other YouTube ladies like Brandra and other people I like to watch I really have not been in the right mind where I have been watching um, so I'm missing a lot um, but I would check out her channel Vera's my bag because uh, or or on Instagram because she did give information she she had bought a, a custom bag like off of a resale site and she washed it and she had some trouble with the lining something happened I think with the lining getting or uh, not the lining not this lining but like the interior batting or whatever and the structure interior um, materials and the quilt and the quilting something happened where I don't know it got wadded up or something I can't remember now but I was surprised I mean I was really I felt really lucky that I had watched that video because I would never have thought twice about throwing a custom bag in the washing machine because I have had absolutely no trouble washing regular store-bought off-the-rack Vera totes I have washed many of them in the washing machine and they've all gone through fine but I would not do that with custom bags. After seeing Liz's experience, I would spot clean or hand wash in a basin if I had to submerge the whole thing. I would do it by hand, absolutely. Um, this is a very soft one. This is like my softest custom tote. Really soft, not stiff at all. Very nice. Very pleased with this. And just to get it up close for people to the light. Very happy with this tote. Very happy, and I've been carrying it, carried it a lot when I first got it, and will continue to carry it through the winter. So that was Java Olive. That was number three. Okay, two is kind of a no-brainer. Winter Palace. This makes it onto all my winter lists all the time. One of my favorite patterns. Again, a Dillard Dillard's pattern. This is a large duffel. I also have it in a backpack, like an extra large backpack, but that's really packed away. Uh, the, the bags that I don't use as much, I really packed away deeply. <laughs> but, you know, just love this. I mean, uh, Christmassy, wintry, uh, that that feeling of like frost and Christmas lights, but also frost with the dot, the dotted line work there, you know, like frost on a window or something. And again, that all that light white coloring dropping out on a dark background, very wintry I feel like well, you don't have to be licking your butt you know on camera <laughs> let's try to pretend at least that we're ladies <laughs> okay and number one Merry Mischief this has got to be my favorite Christmas pattern that they put out when they put out their seasonal like holiday pattern I think this was last year not this year this was last year love this pattern I just love this pattern um, I was carrying this uh, it was a couple weekends ago and I was um, out at a restaurant and a, a bartender co complimented me on, on this. One of the bar backs kind of complimented me uh, on this um, bag, said it was cute. So I do, I do love this bag. And I feel like, yeah, okay, maybe I wouldn't carry this in summer. <laughs> but I wouldn't reserve this for Christmas. I mean, I've been carrying this, you know, since September. <laughs> um, okay, so that was number one of the top ten, official top ten. Now, I just want to mention this before I forget. This is the new pattern, Plum Pansies. And um, I have been waiting. The Vera Tote seems to be, the shipment of the Vera Tote seems to be delayed. I know they've been having lots of delays on shipping, getting their stuff in. So I would like to take a look at this in a Vera tote. Uh, I'm hesitant. I, I would wait for it to be on sale because it's, because of the changes to the, that they made to the Vera tote that kind of feel, make it feel like it's not quite as substantial and worth the money. I would want to wait till it's, you know, on sale. Um, but I am, I would like to get a look at that. I'm not hundred percent sure yet whether I would get it, but I do love pansies. They are, 
Well, I always say yellow roses are my favorite flower, but I do love pansies. I think pansies are like my favorite type of flower. I just think they're so pretty. And so um, I was so pleased to see they did a pansy pattern. Um, I don't think it works on every item that I've seen it in, but I did want to try this item. Um, and I have been, I actually do like a change they made now that it's in the recycled cotton, because prior to that, this, this which they're calling the brush up cosmetic case, um, had a pleather top handle. I can't stand that pleather. I just think it cheapens the whole thing, and I, I refused to buy one. But I do like this kind of an item. I'm always saying I get the, I get the travel case from the factory outlet store because I like anything that zips around up top like a train case, and then flop, you know, opens out like that. And so this was sort of a more high end version of the one at the factory. But I never liked that pleather top handle and then when they made the change to recycled fabric they changed the handle which is great the handles now the fabrics love that um, but I wasn't so crazy about any of the patterns so um, until this I really do like this and so this has a well, next time I go to my dad's I have been using just a regular like brush and blush uh oh everything's all caught okay um, but I might try this uh, next time. It, it sort of has some of the similar features to the brush and blush, but they're in different places. Like here's where you have that piece of plastic and the elastic for any brushes, and there's a zipper pocket here, and this sort of uh, plastic um, material rather than cloth. But I think inside here, though, is, yeah, that's like sort of your nylon kind of Sateen, so that's kind of a sateen feel to it. And then, you know, there's the, the bottom section, just open with some, you know, there's a zipper, mesh zipper pocket and some mesh slip pockets, you know, along the sides there. So I'll see how that works. Then you can see the lining there. This lining reminds me of the lining on um, Indiana Rose pattern. I mean, it's not... I don't really think it's an ecot kind of pattern, but it just has that kind of feel to it and that sort of very structured grid-like placement of the flowers reminds me a little bit of the um, Indiana Rose lining. So about this pattern, exterior pattern, how about you guys don't, you know, like step all over my bags and don't wipe your eye goobs on my bag. <laughs> Ah, uh, dogs. Rosie's been a lot to take lately. I feel like she's in her terrible twos, and they seem to be lasting forever. Um, what I find interesting about this pattern, in addition to that it's pansies, and I just love pansies, and they're very large. You know, it's a, a large scale kind of a rendition of pansies, which is interesting because a pansy is such a small, delicate flower that to have it sort of blown up like this really makes a statement, you know, it makes it more interesting and a little bit more modern, a little bit like pop art, a little Warhol-esque to me, but more than anything, here the bottom gives you a good feeling too. More than anything, when I look at this pattern, I get a very film noir kind of like feeling because of the high contrast, you know, this sharp contrast between the, the black and then the, the white, the very light colors on it. You know, when you watch film noir, there's always that, that very stark use of shadow um, that jumps out at you. And so that's what this rem kind of reminds me of, this pattern. It's almost like film, film noir-ish, especially in kind of a train case item, you know, which has a retro feel to it. So, so I, I did see this in the Glenna at the, at, when I was at the store recently. I had to go to the store to get... Um, something for some a little gift for someone and um, so I splurged and got this for myself um, so I did have a I had a discount through my American Express card um, they offer discounts on stuff which is nice a nice perk and so they had a discount at Beer Bradley amazingly enough <laughs> um, I did see it in the Glenna, which I wasn't crazy about. I did see it in the utility tote. Again, I think it looks gorgeous in the utility tote, but that's a lot. It's a lot of big, it's a statement. It's a, it's a real, you got to commit. 
And I feel like that's what's going to happen with the Vera. So I'm on the fence about it. I think it looked great in a backpack. It looks fun in a backpack. Anyway, so plum pansies would be on the list if I had a bag in it, but I don't. Okay, now, super quick, the winter whites bonus list, which is just five, starting with <coughs> Banquet Bouquet, <laughs> which is a performance twill fabric. Love this. Also has a kind of a retro feel to it, like that you're watching a black and white television because there's barely any color in it. You know, there's red and green. There's uh, little race cars there and uh, ladybugs in red and uh, touches of green in the foliage. This was a special edition for some kind of first lady luncheon uh, that was in Indiana, I think. Um, <clears throat> and that's the tie into the Indianapolis 500 and the race cards and everything. Um, I don't know exactly what the event was. I just got this off of, um, I think it was Poshmark or Mercari. Oh. <laughs> um, here you can sort of see, there we go. Race cars are in the lining too. Hard to, hard to see them maybe. And the checkered flag. You know, here's a race car on the outside. So some of the red touches are race cars. But I just like this pattern. I think it, especially black and white, almost looks like comic book illustration before, you know, when you're at the inking stage, before the color has been put down. I think it's a very strong, interesting pattern. So that was uh, number one. I'm doing this now in the... Yeah, the other ones I did in reverse order. This one I just, because of the way I wrote it, I'm just doing it. That's number one. <laughs> uh, number two, Hummingbird Park. I think this is a great like, kind of winter white pattern. I think it's beautiful. And I just carried my 100 in this for the first time the other night when we went out to dinner. I was so happy to be carrying it. I mean, the night could have gone better, but um, <laughs> my bag made me happy. Um, I love these like light lavender flowers and it's not really a white background it's kind of a very soft like dove gray I have videos on this pattern but anyway I think this works well any season and as, as a good winter white so that was number two uh, three I think was oh yes um, three was park stripe Ooh. Love this pattern. This is the work tote. So these have all been Vera totes, you know. Um, this is a work tote. I do have videos on this bag. Love this bag. Wish they would make. I wish they had made this in Rainforest Twill, but they didn't. So I had to get the Vera tote in that. Um, performance twill, just very elegant. Uh, gray with the delicate stripe in the background, and then all these beautiful, you know, purples and gray flowers, gray tones in the flowers. I think it's very good for winter. So that was three. Four is Lavender Meadow. So the regular, this is an interesting thing to hold up together, right? So we have Lavender Meadow and Bank with a K with none of the, none of the color. <laughs> so that's kind of interesting comparison. It's very different. It's interesting because this gives you more sense of depth. This looks a little bit, it's harder to get a sense of depth with this one. Like a, between the difference between the negative and the, and the space and the actual design. Again, a good winter white. The background is not white white. It's like a very pale gray with sort of like a cross hatching kind of texture in it. Very subtle, hard to see that sometimes, but it's there. As bees and, and uh, ladybugs. I like this pattern a lot. I like it better on the large version of the Vera tote rather than the um, small. The small gets starts to get a little precious for me. I do have the small uh, Vera as well, but I just kind of use it as a knitting bag. Oh my, all my dogs are gone except, except my little mini one. Can you see her? There she is. <laughs> uh, okay, and five. So this is 
number five of the winter whites. This will always be in a, my winter pattern list in some way because I do think it looks really good in winter. This icy blue kind of color. And this is Daisy Dot Paisley. And this again, I love the trim on this one too. I think that's what first drew me to this pattern was the trim. I do love this bag and this pattern. They look full, you know, just like a riot of like line work there. So good, that icy blue is good for winter, you know, and then it would be good for spring too. I think this is good year round, um, but maybe it doesn't scream fall so much, but I don't know. Anyway, so that was it. My top 10 <laughs> winter patterns. Ooh, and I'm, I'm at just a 40 minutes, so I made it under 45. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. Um, anyway, I'm not sure I'm going to get, you know, motivated, able to get motivated enough um, or have the time to come back on this year. I mean, I'm going to try, but I'm not, I, I'm not sure. But I hope people found that um, sort of fun, the top 10 winter, 10 winter patterns, plus the five winter whites, plus the bonus pansies pattern. <laughs> <laughs> it was 10 patterns, that's so really 13, um, as usual. Anyway, um, thanks so much for watching and sticking with my channel, um, even though I haven't been quite as active, and hopefully in the near future that might change a little bit. Um, fingers crossed. <laughs> anyway, um, I hope everyone has a really good uh, holiday season, end of year season, or if you're kind of like me, I hope you just make it through without just wanting to throw yourself from a building. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody's you know has that hallmark card picture perfect holiday experience um and it can be tough for people so um i i wanted to kind of shout out to those people as well who might not be having such an easy time um anyway thanks so much for watching and uh hopefully the next video when i get to it will be a little bit more cheerful and uh <laughs> we're gonna have a um a happy holidays and a um a happy new year uh, if i don't get on until january thanks so much for watching <laughs>